This is a special presentation of Adam Interviews, Poverty in Rochester. Staying out of poverty after leaving it behind isn't always easy. You lose benefits and sometimes have to fight family situations or past trauma to stay on course. Our MAPI looks to lend a guiding hand here, and not just to folks in the city, because poverty plagues our entire region, which I discuss with the Monroe County Executive and the CEO of the Villa of Hope. Well, certainly when we look at poverty, we're looking at the entire county of Monroe. Um, this is a community for all people, no matter where you live. And we are seeing uh, poverty uh, certainly in the city of Rochester, but we're also seeing it uh, in our county suburbs as well. And in fact, Monroe County is 98th out of 100 of populous counties, according to the Chetty study that came out of Harvard, um, which links really a 2% chance then for black children here in Rochester to be able to achieve that, that upward mobility. And I think when you look at the components of um, the, where those youth are and what we know about the segregation of our Rochester community, you have a, a group of, of people who certainly have some challenges around achieving the American dream and on top of that have the challenges of the trauma pieces and the trauma really is all about chronic stress and there's a very long-standing study that talks about the cortisol um, that happens in the brain and the lack of brain development and the fight or flight that comes with that and all of those years of, of cortisol impacting then physical health. And a lot of that's linked to poverty. It is linked to poverty because what we know about adverse childhood is experiences in the study talks about incarceration of parents, domestic violence, um, violence within their community, lack of a proper education. Um, so all of those pieces link to an adverse childhood experience and we see that the, the kids coming from the city have higher adverse childhood ex experiences than, than youth from the suburbs. But that's not to say that we're not seeing the same issues. And County Executive, I've seen it firsthand. I've gone into Rochester Works. I've seen the work that DHS does. It helps a tremendous number of people in our community. At the same time, a lot of people look at these programs that help and they say, but will it change the underlying problem? Sure. Now, it's not just an employment opportunity. What we offer folks who are looking uh, to get that first job or maybe the next job is we provide those types of wraparound services um, to sustain employment. So if people are entering into the job market, um, if you need child care, if you need transportation, if you need soft skill development, if you um, have trauma, if you have issues, if you need a, a mentor or a coach, we're going to provide um, those wraparound supportive services to help people make the transition from wherever they have started um, to a brighter future for them and, and their families. And for these folks, that's part of Paths to Empowerment. For six months, we provide total wraparound services, whatever anyone needs to do to be successful. And we actually assign a one-to-one -one coach to help somebody make that transition. Is there concern that if you do these programs, they end up in an environment that won't be supportive of that effort? Well, what we've seen, uh, Adam, you know, quite honestly, is that um, for, for people who are experiencing some success, um, success begets success. And when you start to experience that, that pride of um, really making the next step and seeing that there is a path forward for you and your family, um, with the support that we are providing again in our Pass to Empowerment program, our wraparound services, um, it is really just so encouraging to see that people want to take the next step. I think I agree with so much of that and I, I think the the concern that I continue to, to see because we're just so involved on the, the youth young adult side mm -hmm. of it along with the families is that even when there's a situation where a parent has some opportunities like Cheryl's talking about but they have they have children. Those children are still going to a school district that we all know from the research and the studies that have been done. It has some major challenges and education is the number one contributor to how successful 
right, that that child is going to be based on, on their ability for future educational opportunities of, of upward mobility. So I, I think that's still an unanswered, unaddressed component to a very large spectrum of, of people that are, right, dependent on the Rochester City School District. It was Frederick Douglass who said it is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. But our MAPI is seeking to do both. Next year, they're set to shift from process change to systems change. It'll be met with skepticism, some of it necessary to protect taxpayer money, but the effort will also enter the next decade under the watch of hopeful eyes that have really looked at poverty and won't stop looking until there's no suffering left to see. Good night.